Hello, beautiful souls. I hope you're doing well today. If you've never connected to my channel, my name is Aksana and I am a being who has been exploring herself for many years now. I became a certified yoga teacher um, about three, four years ago, but I've been um, studying, doing, living yoga life for probably close to 15, 20 years, something like that. And I'm also a certified life coach and I'm certified spiritual coach. Um, I also work with a beautiful company and beautiful group of people that um, initiated something completely new in the hospitality industry. Uh, we have set up standards for wellness in hotels, resorts and retreats and we are certifying properties. So I am involved in these three ventures. I do life coaching, I do yoga wellness retreats, and I certify hotels, resorts, retreats into wellness and connecting wellness retreats to wellness focused traveler. That being said, I also love doing podcasts, but the past, since last August, September, I had to pause on doing podcasts because I've been going through my own another set of changes in my life. And since September until probably the end of this year, or maybe even longer, I will be um, slightly living a nomad life. Um, and I will go into that in a bit. Um, so I'm traveling the world and what the past couple of weeks brought to me while I was in Western Europe is this deeper sense of clarity of what I want to explore with others uh, right now. Of course, besides what I'm already working on, um, it's yoga retreats in Costa Rica. It's um, a workshop online, three tools to uh, use to create your dream lifestyle. And also I'm doing a free event every Sunday, um, gathering open hearts. So it's open heart circle meditation share. So every Sunday starting July 9th, We'll connect at 10 a.m. Eastern time uh, for a tea time. And we'll share something on a specific topic that I will be inspired to channel at that time during that day um, and support each other and uh, share certain elements of ourselves with open heart. We are right now longing for that deeper connection that um, the world is opening up us to. Um, and I will go into that during my podcast um, season, podcast series. But in this video, I wanted to introduce you to this idea that I just received in the past couple of weeks while my during my travels um, it's the idea of a deep human connection initially it just arose in me as an idea to connect to people because as i travel i meet people i talk to people and i realize that Many of us, if not all of us, desire that connection, but we are challenged by it. Either it's too much dependency on being with people, connecting with people consistently, uh, which becomes a bit more of 
overpowering element in our life or some of us um, run away from it, escape it and deep inside yet we still want it, desire it. Um, why? Because it's a natural way of being for humankind. We were built to connect, to create together on whatever level, where, whether it's connecting to create new generation or whether it's create um, projects, new world that we're working on right now, create ways of um, communicating, being, exploring, sharing, making love, um, making friendships, just being together. And also what I've noticed a lot of times um, in the past a few years, I've connected to people where there was an expectation that I had to fulfill. And when I simply released the need to fit into that expectation on whatever level it was, friendship, work, um, love, that connection left my um, energy field. And that showed me that when we open up to what is right, and if that connection is not really, really on a level of the heart, then it will dissipate. And we don't really need to do much about it. But this podcast is not necessarily about that. Um, but what I wanted to say is I, I came to understand that I am desiring different types of connection now. That connection needs to be on a level of vulnerability, heart connection. The connection that does not require any conditions, you know. If you're not this type, if you're not doing this, if you're not showing up like this, then the conditions that I have for you are not meeting my needs. And of course, there are different levels of that. There is a need for disconnection. Absolutely. Um, but we all have to give chance to one another to drop into our hearts, to feel connection from that space, not from the mind. Um, and allow, allow whatever connection it is to create a new form. Because I've heard, uh, I don't follow kind of uh, anything social um, on the level of um, mass media type news or none of that. Uh, it's been years since I've done that. Sometimes I hear it on Facebook or Instagram, but I don't get involved in that. But I heard word cancel culture and I didn't even know what it was until I, to a certain extent, experienced that where I was canceled, which for me, it was just another um, confirmation that it was old energy and it needed to go specifically for me. Um, so what this podcast is about, and I'm very excited about it, is talking about what is deep human connection. And I am saying deep human connection because um, in my conversations, I very much use words of a um, higher realm, which does not involve human aspect. But here we are as humans in human form. And I would like to speak more about that. 
opposed to higher dimensions and the missions that we all or many of us serve here. Uh, because ultimately, if we don't bring that dimensionality, that level of expansion and vibration into the human experience, many of us will not even succeed at our missions and we will not be able to be fully expressed in the human form. And this is something that I realized because many years, for many years, I um, have been pushing the human aspect away because I was comfortable in higher realms. I was comfortable fighting unseen battles, unseen wars that on Mm, big level I'm still participating but I'm not bringing that aspect into this reality as much anymore. I want to focus on how to be the best human utilizing those abilities, right? Those higher realm abilities that we tap in or we choose to tap in to bring it into the humanness and how that level of understanding can help us to open our hearts wider to connect to touch one another wider stronger um, to be more vulnerable not to hide away from difficult conversations that many of us don't like to have um, how to melt our hearts how to open them and allow those difficult barriers, strong barriers that we've hold on to for eons, not even this life only, to release and open them up uh, so our heart can flourish and bloom and present beautiful connections here and present um, all the beautiful unfoldings that we naturally have access to because we are all meant to live in abundance in the lifestyle that brings us joy, happiness, peace, excitement, um, love, creation, whatever it is that as a child you wished to tap into and fantasize about. And if our heart is closed, it's very hard. Yes, we can create from the wounds um, very much. A lot of musicians tap in into that sorrow and sadness and depression and amazing lyrics, amazing words. Uh, amazing sound comes out of it, but that level of music perpetuates that state of being, which is needed when we need to tap in into that, when we go perhaps through moments of grief and sadness, because it will happen. And that kind of sound can assist us to tap in deeper, experience that state of being, and release it. The trouble that we get into is staying in that state of being for many years, if not many lives. So the topic of open heart connection is something that is very dear to me because um, all my life, um, I have felt internally very isolated, very abandoned, very much ignored, and I kept my walls <sighs> up, uh, close, uh, up, and Yes, there is, an, there is a story behind it. There is a long story behind. Our life is 
continuation, like this life is continuation of many lives. And our lives is not, are not like a string. It's not linear. It's more like circular, right? It's circular. So deeper and deeper, um, we understand ourselves in this life, deeper we go in into our lives together and understand what the topic of our lives is, because ultimately it's similar topic. And let me dive a little bit about uh, into my story because that's the only way I can fully describe um, what I want to express because I cannot talk broadly about it because because I choose not to take that step um, um, where I may look like I know more or I know better or um, because I ultimately I don't <laughs> I don't know more and I don't know better but when I tap into the knowingness, the higher realms that I've been tapping into for many years now. In fact, from childhood, it's just I blocked it, but just like many of us. Um, and my, I have a direct access to the knowledge. I just have to keep on having the protocol that I do in my life and a huge step is um, of this protocol is connecting to nature is being in the nature and creating a healthy boundaries with thought patterns of others because I tap in very much uh, quickly into somebody else's thoughts and I had to learn to understand where is the barrier between my thought patterns and another. And sometimes it takes quite a bit and it did quite a bit for me. Uh, it took a while to understand that. So, so my story goes back, of course, eons ago, uh, even not from this life, but I will begin in this life because I want to focus on human connection, not cosmic connection, because cosmic connection um, can take us far. And I perhaps will go there. I will, uh, but not just yet. Uh, maybe we'll progress slowly through the podcast. But in this life, I... Um, Began my life um, as a child who initially uh, had a very natural laugh. Um, the laugh that my father said I couldn't even um, stop myself from laughing. Like I, it was contagious. So even he had to, you know, was forced to laugh because my laugh initially was contagious but then literally years after that i closed off i recognized the harshness of this world um, and i became sad i became very sad as a child and um, throughout my childhood i was very closed off and I think I already have mentioned that in previous podcasts, I did not express my emotions very easily. Um, and things that have been maybe um, light for others, they were difficult for me. And I grew up with a feminine that um, didn't have, of course, a healthy way of expressing the emotions. And there was a lot of codependency from the feminine side and from the masculine side. There was a lot of escapes, escapism, <laughs> if that the word. Um, so from one side, I felt constricted. And from the other side, I felt abandoned. So I had a little bit of both. And... Uh, and the only expression of my emotions uh, I had is through dancing because I started dancing at six years old and I've danced um, on a semi-professional level for many years. Uh, I think I stopped finally dancing at 20 
uh, when I was already in in, in U.S. Um, because I, I did not grow up in U.S. Um, so and when I left my country as a child um, on a tour for dance, I was 15 and a half. Um, I carried on that pattern of abandonment, of not being wanted, um, on being rejected, not being good enough. You know, that pattern of isolation, even though I've been always surrounded by people, and I'm sure you can relate because many of us relate to this pattern where there's so many people around, but inside we don't feel connected. And why we don't feel connected? Because we, first of all, we live in condition. We love each other with conditions and we don't allow one another to be open and vulnerable and we continue protecting our heart from hurt, from pain, from the world, you know. Well, you know, the saying is me against the world. So, and that's how I felt majority of my life. I mean, I would say good first 33 years, 35 maybe even, then I slowly started the, the process of figuring out, okay, what is going on? Because I'm exhausted from feeling that way, from battling the world and not being able to connect deeper with others. So, and um, then that pattern of isolation, rejection, of course, started to popping up in my um, romantic relationships, of course. Um, in fact, uh, just now, I just turned 46, and just now I um, had a moment um, where I felt a shift. I felt a shift um, in my in the depth of my heart, and I will tell you in a bit why. I, um, in the middle of the night, I woke up and I had this pain in my heart. It wasn't the pain of, oh my God, I gotta run t to the doctor. No, not at all. Um, it wasn't a spasm because I used to have spasms in um, the muscle around my heart here, that goes here. Um, but it was deep pain that it was noticeable. I woke up from it um, and right away with the knowing I understood that my heart is finally finishing up that element of constriction that I had, um, sorry, that I had um, since the time I was born in hu human form here. And what is happening with me now is since September, I've been connecting deeper with others. Before I lived in a community and it was first step of really living with other people continuously day after day and working with them. Um, I've um, lived pretty much all my life, I would say since 26 until about I would say I've lived on my own. It's hard to say from what year to what year, but I've lived on my own for probably 20 years and I loved it. I loved having my own place. I loved being my own boss. Uh, that's my comfort zone and I love it. Um, but then I also knew I couldn't get to that deeper connection with others. And um, then when I moved from New York. I lived and worked in New York for a couple of years to California second time around. I um, 
lived in a community and I work in a community and I was teaching uh, falsetto dating, teaching yoga wellness retreats and um, also working there. And that's when my initiation into connection to other people on daily basis began. I have spent time with my romantic partners living with them in the past for uh, first time it was six years and second time it was two years. So I had an experience living with a partner, but I never, I never actually experienced a deep connection yet. Like a, the connection that in which your heart is truly vulnerable truly you are meeting another with open heart without any conditionality you know you know what i mean because relationships can be the most rewarding experience on earth in human form but they are most likely the hardest experience so yes <laughs> So after I spend a year in the community living, mingling, cha being challenged so much, um, you know, I've learned so much more about the complexity of connection on a human level. And then um, I lived with people, with friends, with family members, uh, throughout the past uh, eight, nine months now. And that's when my experience of really understanding on a deeper level what human connection truly means and learning from experiencing other people's reaction and challenges while I'm with them all the time and understanding the reasons why I ran away from people and understanding the reasons why I need to connect to people. There was so much uh, self-knowing and exploring took place and of course, with the diplomatic energy, I had to explore other people, people's reactions, stories, action toward me, um, whether they're friends, not friends, you know, because all of us ultimately learning about ourselves through other people. If we always live on our own, it's actually easy. And it's harder to learn our personal challenges, right? So, and the deepest opening began when I uh, spent some time with my dear sister. And I left home when I was almost 16. So, I would say I've seen my family, my siblings, my sister, and my parents. I would say I can count on my 10 how many times in the last 30 years. So I did not spend a lot of times with my family. It was always no more than two weeks because in the past for about 20 years I had a um, corporate office career where you know they give you two weeks a year and enjoy <laughs> enjoy your life that's why I right now focus my life coaching on uh, lifestyle and life purpose because if we receive two weeks a vacation a year and our employer uh, assumes that it's enough. Uh, of course, some give a month, but at the same time, when we take a month, we either get judged by others or we feel guilty because we need to be in the office doing the work. But we don't get to spend time with our loved ones because not all of us live in the same town, in the same city, country. You know, my family lives all over the world, so I cannot go and see them. And 
So in my 30 years being in another country, I spend maybe, I don't know, maybe two months all together with them. I don't know if I have to count, maybe a little bit more. I'm exaggerating, maybe three months, maybe four, but uh, one or two weeks in every whatever years, because I also love to travel. I cannot uh, go and see my family every year because I have to utilize that time for me. <laughs> so anyway, um, the point is um, freedom living our lifestyle is so important because if we don't get to explore life, connect to people and live the lifestyle we wish, we ultimately don't fulfill our mission on earth. Even if it's a constricted living and it resonates with you on a deeper level in your heart, then that's okay. That's your path. But if you live in constriction and it creates illnesses in your body, in your emotions, in your mental state, then it's not your way of expressing uh, your humanity here on earth. So being said, uh, that being said, human connection, me spending very short time with my family. And finally this year, I'm able to spend months with them, allowing me to finally open up that constricted space within my heart that life presented for me. I could have chosen another path. I could have continued living in the city this year, doing exactly what I'm doing now, but not traveling and not spending time with friends and family. But my intuition my path, my life took me to explore my connections deeper. And that is the healing part that I'm experiencing right now for my heart to fully expand and no longer feel the isolation within me, no longer feel abandonment, no longer feel rejection. And mind you, um, I have experienced rejection on different levels in my romantic relationships um, and friendships too, actually. Friendships, romantic. Um, and as you know, with time, it gets very tiring. Um, so if you are experiencing a level of and satisfaction in your relationships and friendships. Um, explore your connection to humans, to humanity, to others. What is it within you creates those boundaries that are not healthy, creates those barriers more like. Boundaries are good to have because they allow you to experience your individual expression and purify your energy either daily, weekly, monthly, however your energy needs. And at the same time, also enjoy that deeper connection, heart connection with another, either on a personal level, on a business level, on creation level. Um, I truly believe that we must be able to experience life in our own energy, be able to carry on our life on our own, and yet connect in a healthy way to another human being. That's when we begin creating a different new type of world when we don't cancel one another, when we are able to have conversations with one another, even if they're hard. But if we speak from our heart, there are no difficult 
conversations. Even if tears are rolling down our face, if the heart is open, we're able to connect, we're able to speak. But to open that heart takes willingness, takes a choice. It takes willingness to step into that. Um, so ask yourself, do you choose to open up your heart? Do you choose to step toward a deeper connection with humans, with other humans like you? That's the question. So, like I said earlier, um, another level of openness took place within me. I feel it now and that's what inspired me to um, begin another series of podcasts speaking of a deeper human connection on earth because ultimately that is what will allow us as a collective to create a different way of living a different way of creating, a different lifestyle, different level of relationships, different work environments, different way how we observe world, how we perceive world, how we create world, how we live it every day. As you can see, the old is crushing. It's crushing. No one can stop it. No more. And now it's the time for fresh new beginnings on this planet. The old will be crumbling continuing continuously as the new will be arising. So the choice is yours. Would you like to step into the new frequency, new energy of the heart, new deeper connection with one another, new level of vulnerability, new level of expression, new way of feeling life, sensing life, sensing God, creation, all of us interaction and be gentle with yourself because to step into this frequency you will have to go through tears through irritation through agitation through losses um, and if you're losing something let it go it's leaving your energy for a reason. If you don't know, I've six years ago lost everything. Minus my dearest cat. My cat stayed with me, but then he passed uh, and left the physical form a year ago. <sighs> I still connect with him. I still love him, but it was his time. Uh, but yes, if you are losing people, losing uh, materialistic things, find strength to let it go. Find strength to face the fear. And when you let go of that fear, that's just another barrier you dropped around your heart. So I thank you so much for tuning in into this podcast. It is just an introduction to what I will be creating. Uh, bear with me. I will try my best to post podcasts. Most likely I will start once in two weeks, but I probably will start doing once a week because I am traveling. I will be in Eastern Europe this week actually oh my lord i will be spending time with my parents i will be doing um, some fun stuff actually i will be recording more yoga videos i haven't done that in a while uh 
doing podcasts, uh, running a couple of workshops, please join me. It's on my website, oksanabeam.com. It's under uh, workshops, classes, events page. Uh, and please, if you wish, join my Costa Rica retreat in April of 2024. Um, I am so eager to schedule more retreats but i first have to focus on costa rica retreat because i have a couple of things i'm juggling right now um but ultimately my goal is to run probably six retreats a year and continue connecting human hearts opening up the hearts connecting them through nature meditations personal stories insights uh, shares through yoga movements through qigong through um what else am i implementing i'm trying to think a lot of nature a lot of um sound healing um it's just some modalities that I already implement into the retreat. So feel free to join me. It's also on my website under retreats. And I hope you join the open heart circle every Sunday starting on June 9th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. I'm sending you so much love. Um, so much openness. So much depth so much joy so much love and i hope your path is blooming i hope your life is blooming even if it's challenging because challenge means you're breaking through Challenge means this is something to overcome. And be graceful with yourself. Allow gratitude and compassion towards yourself. Be always present. You are human walking this path. Remember that. And besides human, you never your soul continues to live. It's always present. So don't be afraid. <laughs> Sending you my love. Have a beautiful day. Connect to me and much love.